John sir, I was going through your uh, journals actually completely this time. It's very nice, you know. Those, uh, that uh, like at that time the mind was uh, the how the mind, you know, put those words. Uh, at that time it was very devotional, you know. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, recently one of the Guru Bandhu is there, okay, Sudhir. So, we generally discuss sometimes uh, things like, you know, to understand like uh, how the mind is functioning uh, regarding the spirituality. He comes and says, you know, uh, we need to follow a particular method or use Vedanta or something. But uh, it looks like, you know, following Vedanta or some pattern, you know, blindly following it is like, it is like, you know, having some food or consuming alcohol or something like that, you know, mind is uh, indulging in those things and it try, tries to run away from the reality. Now the mind is just, you know, entertaining in these concepts and is trying to, run, you know, running away from the reality. So to see the reality first, then we have to come out of all these pat all these, you know, patterns. Is it? Well, you have to know yourself in a real sense. And yeah. that's it. So, then once you know yourself as this formless sense of presence, you know, you invite the attention of the invisible listener. This mm -hmm. presence is here. Presence mm -hmm. is formless. I am that. Everything that appears is within that. Therefore, there's no need to really worry about all these things that are appearing because they're just appearances. So that means you are saying to try to know yourself. That's it. And leave everything behind. Yeah. So that will tackle whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, Nizagadatta Maharaj talks about remain with the I am and then it exposes all the secrets. It opens up everything. Like uh, Ramakant Maharaj says, it's an open secret. You know, and that open secret is this, this presence. You invite the attention of the invisible listener and the entire world appears on spontaneous presence. That's it. Like, as long as you know yourself in a real sense, you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. So you sense this subtle sense of presence. Oh, so that I, I am that. I'm not the body. I'm this presence, this I am, this sense of existence this uh, I am knowledge, whatever you want to call it. And then all of the worldly things, are, are, they disappear. You don't need Vedanta or this or that or this. These are the progressive steps and the different little stepping stones that brought you to your final destination where Sri Ramakant Maharaj, who is the formless presence in the form, says to you, because you're still believing your form, even though you're formless presence, you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. There is no separation between master and disciple. There's no such thing as master and disciple, or you, me, he, she, it, I, nothing, 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 nothing. Because the formlessness, all this form is appearing within this formlessness, and that you are. That's it. There never was a this. Now, if you sit there and you say, okay, I'm formless and I'm everything, but I'm going to confine myself to this little body-based experience. For this moment, I confine myself to this body-based experience. And when I'm in this body-based experience, even though I know it's illusion, seemingly I can pick up books and read. And I can read about Ramana Mahashi and get those concepts. I can read about Nizagadatta Maharaj and get those concepts. But the truth is that Nizagadatta Maharaj, Ramana Mahashi, Sri Ramakant Maharaj, Sri Sitameshra Maharaj were the formless presence within the form that knew themselves as formless. And the words they spoke were pointing you, hey, guess what? You're formless. So now you have to remove this body illusion. It's not true, but there's still this subtle belief because of long association with the body that you're a body, but you're not. And everything that the body has ever done was not done by you. There's no do or no deed because. The body is just an empty lump of flesh that is animated by this presence. That's it. You're formless. That's why we always say, if you're all you want to compare, compare yourself to sky or space. 
the space in this room, let's say the aliveness of the space. And then suddenly this lump of goo, the space touches this lump of goo and says, oh, I exist. And as I exist, I see all these things and I forget that I'm the space because now there's things to see and experiences to be had. It's all illusion, but the longer I look and around and I see from this wrong perspective that I'm something and these are some things, and then the mind creates these memories and thought flow of I'm experiencing. I, I can feel cold. Well, this is within the illusion of being in a body. Once the space separates from this body, there's no cold, no hot. All of that was based on the wrong perspective of being a body. And you're not a body. So the practice, there's only one. <clears throat> Remain with your selfless self. Spend all the time with your own self. The sense of presence you will feel because you have a body form. So you can sit here and use this body as it's talked about, to dip into the nectar of immortality and sip this amarut, this nectar. And, and you just sip on that. And that's sipping this, uh, it's called existence consciousness bliss, whatever you want to call that. The presence with presence, I am with I am, consciousness with consciousness. And that's it. When you sit for meditation, you don't sit as this body form trying to get something. It's I am concentrating on I am using this body as kind of the media in which to find yourself. And that's it. So are you saying like, uh, that, like trying to be, trying to dip into the nectar of immortality means trying to stop identifying? No, so that... stop, not stop identifying. Invite the attention of the invisible listener. When you sit for meditation, and I'm sure you sit for meditation very, very peaceful. Maybe the sense of peace, the sense of whatever you want to call it, presence, spirit, I am, this very subtle sense. And now you just remain. And you can open your eyes and you're still remaining there, even though there's things to be seen. There's no inside or outside because you're remaining with yourself as self. The body pressure is dissolving because you're just formless presence. That, that's, that's it. And there's no practice needed other than you believe in this illusion, but it's not true. And once you remain with yourself as self, even for a couple of minutes, it's, you know, oh, so that I, I am that. Presence is all there is. You must have felt this I am. Nizargadatta Maharaj talks about remain with the I am. What's the I am? Just I, just I. Discarding everything, remaining with the sense of presence. Just I, just I. And, and then now we've talked about God is a jealous God. You remain with the sense of presence. And when things are happening in the so-called outside world, you remain with the sense of presence and allow them to pass because everything's coming and going. You are not coming and going. And you remain there. That's it. Forget about all the books. Forget about all those things. Spend some time with you. Sri Ramakap Maharaj says, sit and just see. Just see what's here. Sitting. Okay, maybe there's a little some mind flow activity still. You're looking at some thoughts and such, but there's a witness to all of this. And so you concentrate on the concentrator. You concentrate. The sense of presence, this, this just I, just I, with nothing. No experience, no experience. You're just here, concentrating, meditating on the meditator, which as Nisargadatta Maharaj says, the I am remaining with the I am. The I am sitting in meditation, meditating on the I am, using the body as the media to discover this, that you are. And once you know yourself in a real sense, which is the 
As Maharaj says, the only thing about spirituality is to know yourself in a real sense. Then you can throw away all this learning because you know yourself. Now you remain with yourself. Then you kind of test yourself with yourself because things will be occurring, but you know it's, it's illusion. I remain with myself. The more I remain with myself, then the things outside, I'm not get taking the touch of those things. I just remain with myself. And you know. Then if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, Rami, you know, if you're not following the Vedanta and you're not doing your sutra somethings to rid your karma of clarity, then it's not good. And you say, oh, okay, you, this is good for you. It's good, good. You see, I know myself in a real sense. And seemingly, there's nothing but this. And my master, who is this presence in the body form of Sri Ramakant Maharaj, told me, there's nothing but this. So there's no, no knowledge is knowledge. Any knowledge that I acquire is separating me from apparently separating me from who I am because I'm formless, thoughtless, stateless, nothing. And now go about, do your job, do your duties, and things will come, you do them. Huh, new scene, new scene. The idea of a timeline or living a life, it dissolves because you're formless. That's, that's it. Spontaneous conviction. You just touch yourself once. Oh. And now remain there. In all your spare time, remain there. And they've talked about this in, in not just in, in our uh, you know, through, through our, there, there's a, a thing, as a matter of fact, that Andrew mentioned, Brother Lawrence, practice of the presence of God. He mm -hmm. said things a little bit mm -hmm. differently, but did exactly the same thing. He said he'd do go about his daily activities with being a cook. He gave everything to God, and he was just in the presence, enjoying himself and doing these things, no matter whether he was sitting. And when the monks tried to get him to sit and actually meditate, he didn't really so much care for that, but he followed the rules. But while he was there, he would be like, okay, you know, I'm still in the presence and everything's nice. And now I'm going to leave this and just go about my daily activities and be in the presence. And that's it. So that means when, when one is identified with oneself in real sense, then there is no contradiction in any way. Just How flowing can there with be? The There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing except the presence that you are. Okay. So everything that's occurring within the presence is nice to look at, I guess, but it's not you. It's not the, yeah, it's not the... the birth and death occur to the body, and the body appears within your presence because the presence is formless. It's, it's inside this body, it's outside this body, and the little dog walking on the street, it's inside the dog and outside the dog because that's all there is, and everything is appearing within this. Sir, like, you know, when I listen to you in the, in the sessions or after listening sessions, it's uh, sometimes, you know, my thoughts will stop and there comes a kind of emptiness. It's not real emptiness. But I don't think that it's a final state, you know, but what Nisra Tamaras or you say, like you focus, on, you say to focus on I am, mm -hmm. but but sometimes you speak like, you know, you are beyond everything. Nothing is existing apart from you. There is no experience or experience you say. But is this, okay, that final state, that is the ultimate of oneself or this attending I am is the ultimate. Well, again, this whole idea of ultimate is only from the perspective of being an individual, Indigenous. a body form. So there's no real alt. There's this kind of thing won't make sense once you understand yourself, your formless presence. You were never a body. You are not a body. There's nothing. That's it. And the only way you know you exist is because this body form provides that touch of, oh, I exist. Otherwise, the space in the room has no concept of existing and is everywhere, so has no concept of otherness because that's all there is. So, like how a mirror 
is giving you know helping to reflect the image like that this experience is helping to reflect the existence of the uh, true i correct like how, the like feeling, it, it, the feeling of the sense of existence yeah because prior to being this there was no feeling of existence you existed because the feeling of existence appeared to you that existed without knowing your existence but there there's no need to know your existence but you do okay i exist but then the wrong perception is i exist as this body form and from this perception i see a world i see things i see all this stuff i can knock on this table and that's because i've entered the dream state of i am somebody else Remember, Shri Ramakar Maharaj says, this is a long dream. The dream is, I am somebody else, but you're not. You're nobody, you're everybody. You're nothing, and you're everything. There's nothing other than your own selfless self. That's why <laughs> Sri Ramakar Maharaj says, accept your selfless self. There's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no Master. Nothing is there. And that nothing knows existence. I exist. So that means that nothingness or selfless self is the true seer in this body, correct? But there's no seeing. See, this is again seeing from the perspective of being an individual or something limited. All of this <laughs> but, is a dream. When you lay down at night and you sleep, you could say that you're a form inside this formlessness, which you know it's formless because it's within a dream. And yet within this dream, suddenly a world is created. A lot of people are created. And even you see yourself as one of the people inside this dream. For a limited time inside this dream, you see yourself performing activities, speaking with people, all kinds of different things are going on inside your dream. But none of it is true. It all arose from one sensation, I exist. In this sleeping state, this sense of existence mixed and created this consciousness in which all these things are appearing. But you, okay. the sleeper, are not involved in any of it. That's why uh, Ranjit Maharaj says if you murder a bunch of cows in your dream and then you, you wake up, you've done nothing wrong. Did you take the karma? No. Because it's nothing. And the same thing here. While you're within this body form and this form-based existence, this illusion of experience brought about by the concept of being a body in a world, then you do what is necessary, do your job, do your duties, but you know you're formless. You're not having this body-based experience. And, and as soon as the formlessness is no longer able, this body is no longer to sustain that formlessness, then that experience of, of being of, of a form is dissolved it's gone but it never was it's the same as the dreamer we talked about before you're dreaming inside your dream let's say you are rami and you have a bunch of friends and you're all going off to college and day after day you study very very hard now some of you you don't study so hard and you get a little bit bad grades and you're worried that mom and dad yeah. are going to you know comment or whatever but here's the deal you wake up and the studying, the no studying, all the efforts that were put in, let's say Rami inside the dream was meditating like crazy, 10 hours every day, and you wake up. Was, was there any effort? All effort has disappeared because Rami that was inside the dream never was. It was an illusion. The seer, the formless seer within the dream that was recording and video shooting, as Maharaj says, the whole scene is no more. Just poof, all of the scene is just gone. The seer was true through the formlessness. Even the seer, Rami, who's laying down sleeping, eyes closed, is not. How is Rami seeing? It's not Rami seeing, it's the formlessness that you are. And the same, we talk about consciousness, dream consciousness creates the dream world waking consciousness creates the waking world and both are arising in the same way you are not body in a dream you are not body 
in this so-called waking state. And everything that's going on never was. Nothing's happening. Nothing's ever happened and nothing can ever happen. And now with this knowledge, live your life. Enjoy. As the moment and the scenes are passing, don't get disturbed. What is there to be disturbed about? It's your dream. And your dream, that's why a lot of you here devotees, they'll, they'll talk about, well, the, in a dream, this table is not solid. In a dream, I cannot take this water and put it here. And then the next day I wake up, aha, it's still here. In a dream, I can't do that. But that's only because you've deluded yourself in believing that you're not still within a dream. <clears throat> this body-based existence is a long dream. Now, once you leave this body, or you're no, this body is no longer able to sustain the essence, then you will not know if this bottle was here in the morning, so to speak, because there's nothing there. Sir. Okay, so you are saying, except selfless, self are shared, nothing is there you are saying. Correct. But who is the one realize that I am that? Is it the mind? Is it the consciousness? Or who, who is the one? Or is it, it is just like, you know, this uh, wrong idea of existence, gone? Or is it just like that? Or, so if when it, you know if the, yourself in a real sense, like, you're still perceiving this body is still seeing computers and still doing this and still buying lollipops, enjoying different flavored lollipops and buying them <laughs> and buying bottled water and eating and going to restaurant, not now going to restaurants. Now you have to call for DoorDash, but in previous before COVID going to restaurants and still looking at news for COVID going to work every day. But that is not true. Uh, but who is the one really see, but uh, logically if, if we think mind can't so if there is only one that is true then mind and that other thing could not exist coexist because there mind, is only one consciousness mind came along the, with the body yeah mind came so along even, with the body that's so why your body, mind can't present to you anything other than what your body-based existence or body-based experiences have been mind can't present anything that you have not experienced within the body-based illusion that's why you know in the formlessness, you're prior to mind. And that's why the mind stops because this whole mind flow is just about the things that are appearing due to the fact that you're a body in a world, that wrong perception. Mind can't sit there and present you, this is how we are dreaming or thinking about the memories of how you were prior to taking the body. No, can't do that because mind came along with the body. The mind is a hard drive, like Maharaj says, filled with wrong files. The wrong files are, I'm a person. I'm a body in a world having experiences. I can remember when my mother held me in her arms and all this sort of stuff. This is all mind because I believed through the wrong perception that I am somebody in a world. It's not true. So that idea will be erased. That's it. Of course, because... Presence is formless. You're, there's nothing. So you know automatically everything that's form is untrue. And all the experiences with form are never happening. Because, again, imagine if at all you want to compare, compare yourself to sky or space. Sky is not having the experiences of the clouds moving in it. The space in this room is not having any experiences of the objects within it. Now, if the space was able to click with this lump of goo and see, then the space would become confused that, oh, look at all this world. And then there's a mom and dad telling you about this world, and you get information about this world. And then after you're done kind of playing in the world, you learn that you're actually the space. But you've learned, but you've, you've been taught that you're this body for so long that you read in the book, you're not a body, you're the space. And you say, well, how can I be the space? Well, but you are the space. You just have the wrong perception of being a body. So, so space is labeled as body under the experiences. Well, the body would be, again, this is just example. The space in the room is having experiences yeah. using this body. Yeah. Yeah. Then... 
sitting and reading a book, it says, you are not body, you are the space in the room. And you sit here and you say, how can I be this space in this room? So when I die, what happens to me? Well, but you're the space and the space is not experiencing. The illusion of experience for the space is brought about because of this concept of having a body and being in a world, but the space is not experiencing anything. Pretty complete. <laughs> yeah. It's just some... And Maharaj, he says, all the spiritual speeches, all the spiritual books, they're meaningless. They're to get you to the place where you remain with your own selfless self. And there's Argadatta Maharaj says, why did he realize himself in three years? Very simply, because his, his guru told him, you are that I am. That's it. So he sat in every waking moment and looked at himself. And that's what Maharaj has told you. Sit in every waking moment and look at yourself. If you truly believe that you're going to get some sense of spirituality by attending a few satsangs and listening and even doing bhajans and all this kind of stuff, but you're not investigating your own self, it's not going to happen because you are using a body with a label to try and know yourself, which is formless. So the, as Maharaj says, like vip, vipassana meditation and all this sort of thing, it's egoistic meditation because I am somebody else meditating. Doing meditation. Yeah. And you're formless. <laughs> So that's it. Know yourself in a real sense. Your time is best spent any, any time just sitting and, you know, okay, maybe you're still having some kind of thought train or whatever, but you just allow that to just pass. Just sit with yourself. <coughs> this sense of presence will rise. In, in, even if it's as small as a dime, you just direct the energy, energy attention, everything into this. That's it. That's why Maharaj says, be with you. That's yes, be with you always. Be with you. And you can be sitting at work, working, not giving yourself away, just remaining with yourself or self. Maybe not in the beginning. And see, that's also why we have the pictures of the masters and we have these various things so that you can bow down to your selfless self and worship yourself because maybe you don't able to have the ability right now to formlessly worship the formlessness you know the sense of presence that it, it, it's easier to direct your attention towards the master a picture of the master or something like this because you're still in that kind of illusion that there are things and there are forms and once you know yourself you just sit it's anytime you just sit and you just feel this 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 energy, this power, this, and the only reason you feel yourself is because you have this body and you dip this body as a cup into the nectar of immortality. Maharaj calls it selfless self intoxication. It's the best. And somebody comes to disturb you with the thoughts or ideas about anything okay okay thank you thank you it's good somebody comes and says you know what it's not that because nizagadatta maharaj says you are not that i am you are the knower of the i am so all of that that you're listening all of this that you're discovering it's untrue well okay you okay okay that's your interpretation of this thing it's okay it's good no worries Because this I am, the sense of presence, this existence, this spirit, remember Maharaj says what you impress reflects. You impress, you worship, you remain with your selfless self. Yes, I must know the reality. You invite the attention of the invisible listener and you just sit, you just savor that. And then, okay, you get up, you go, you do something. And then in the middle, maybe you're blessed with being in line or in a traffic 
Oh, so nice, because I'm going to remain with myself with self right now. Thank you, Master. You've given me this opportunity to sit and just remain with myself. Or if you start to get all disturbed about something, you can sit there and say, wait a minute, it's all illusion. And then I just remain with myself with self. And then I can speak and do whatever needs to be done, but I just remain with myself with self. Somebody's bothering you or troubling you, Oh, yeah, that's right. That's my own selfless self. And this is a moment that Master has blessed me with to remain with my selfless self. Here's this irritating person, but that irritating person is my own self. And my Master has placed this position right now for me to remain with myself so I can go deeper and deeper and deeper into my selfless self. So that I can just remain there. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. Most people would say, uh, I can't do that. <clears throat> well, I doesn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I should just kind of fall back into it. It really helps if you get at least a little taste of it along the way, you know. Well, and that's meditation. That's why meditation is so important. Forget about everything else. Remain with your selfless self. Now, like Maharaj says, when you're reading the books, you can read the reader, which is that sense of presence, that recognition in the projection. All the books are doing this because, again, it's only you, and you're recognizing <laughs> that you are Nizagadatta Maharaj. You are Sri Siddharmeshwar Maharaj. You are Sri Ramakat Maharaj. You are Sri Ramana Maharaji. You are Jesus Christ, Buddha, etc., etc. So there's a recognition in the projection. You read the reader. <gasps> It's my story, so that I, I am that. This is not blasphemous and saying, oh my God, you said you're Jesus Christ. No, because Jesus Christ is appearance within your spontaneous presence. But well, Jesus said, oh, he was no difference. Basically, there was no difference between him and God. Exactly, because there's not. There's no difference between you and God. Because there is no God other than your own selfless self. So nothing that's exists separate from God. There's nothing that exists separate from God. God is a label for this that you are. There's no, like, separation. That's why Nisargadatta Maharaj says, do I owe my being to another being? No. How? What is this? This doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I am the father of one. Yes. Was absolutely. Presence. He also said, as of myself, I can do nothing. Correct. And that's speaking from the perspective of trying to talk to other forms about the formlessness using forms without using those words. You say, of myself I am nothing, the Father doeth the works. That's absolutely true of each and every one of us. This is a meat suit, and presence <laughs> animates it within the presence that you are. Which so, I think it's also, I only say what I hear the Father say, and I only do what I see the Father doing. Exactly. Yes. You're created in the image and likeness, so to speak, because this form is coming from or the reflection of the formlessness that you are. I exist. But remember the I exist itself, the first and primary concept is incorrect. Because that is the birth of duality. I exist. You exist without needing to know you exist, without needing this knowledge of existence. But the knowledge of existence came, and immediately the creation of one spurned two. That's why it's ad veta, which means not two. Exactly. And you don't want to even say, oh, it's just oneness. Like you see a lot of the hippie guys will be, oh, we're all in oneness. And all this kind of... No, it's not oneness. It's actually zero. <laughs> if you want to be exact. <laughs> Sounds better in the song, though. <laughs> yes, but 
but but when you say one, then immediately you say there's someone to say one, and then there's another, and this separation and the concept of duality comes. When I sit there and I say I exist, then there's a something that knows I exist, but there's existence without the needing to know and without the knowledge to know. And that again is why no knowledge is knowledge. You're formless. And formless, let's not create a concept of formless. Formless is attributeless, without. You know, they talk about neti neti, not this, not this, nothing. There is nothing. You, you are that. And if you ask, what happens when I leave this body? You're not in this body right now. This so body is within living. you, just like a dream. What happens when you wake up to the dream and all these dream people, where do they go? Heaven or hell? And what about the very bad people in your dream? If you see people robbing banks and such in your dream, they should go to hell, right? I mean, they're doing the, maybe even in your dream, you see them shooting people and stealing car and robbing and all this kind of stuff. Oh, this is horrible. Do they go to heaven or hell? They're bad deeds, right? Now, these bad deeds, if they really had karma, they're born again as insects. But when you wake up, even the insects in your dream are not. Sir, if that is the case, then what is the point of, you know, doing meditation or uh, trying to understand that one is that? If everything is already in perfect or, you know, there is only one. Because you are in this body-based experience until the essence can no longer sustain you. So, but one day, one day body will be dropped now. What if the body is dropped now? There's no difference. But you're here, so there's, this, there, there's the illusion of experience. And once you know yourself in a real sense, this illusion of experience is no longer like a drudgery or a, a, a duality of pain and pleasure and, and all this sort of thing. The, these, this experience is just occurring and these scenes are happening until this body is no more. You could live to be a thousand or drop dead tomorrow and it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. But while you were in this body-based illusion, then you do your job, you do your duties, you do these things, you remain at peace, and you just use this body as an instrument. And then there's no trouble. Like the whole reason we say, oh, I want spirituality, like Maharaj says, we want peace, happiness. Uh, that is agreed, you know. Tension free. But you don't need any of those things. Those are just in the illusion of you being somebody and somebody who wants relief from themselves, which will give peace, happiness, tension free life, and all these sort of things. But when you know yourself in a real sense, then the need for peace is not there. There's no, you're just here. You're just, I don't know how you talk about it. You just, you're just here. And you do your job, do your duties, do this stuff, get in the car, go get the car washed, go, you know, my son, I go and drive and play with my son. I don't have to keep reminding myself that I'm formless, formless, formless. I just am. And so you enjoy. No Go ahead. So, like uh, how we a uh, deer chase, you know, for water in. Exactly. exactly. So that that chasing will stop you. Gone because why? <laughs> why uh, the deer once he sticks his nose in the sand and realizes it's not water, he's not going back to quench his thirst. And and once again, we can go with the the Christianity about the living well. You know, that Jesus talks about the living well within and that the water that I give is life. Yes, yes, I read Bible. So yeah. And this is, you know, it's saying. And in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying that all of this is myself. My presence is in every being. But it's not Krishna saying this. See, we don't want to get hung up on Jesus and Krishna and Buddha, because it's all your own self. You are the totality. Everything that ever was, ever is, and ever will be, is you. And there has never been a blemish on that.
I think the meditation helps um, because of that. It helps to deepen the conviction that um, is so important. <laughs> it's kind of like hammering, as uh, Maharaj was saying, you know, just continuous hammering away. And oftentimes, it's not really painful at all. It really feels <laughs> incredibly great. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The more you remain with yourself, the more you be with you always, and don't let other outside things tear you away from yourself. Then it's just it it, it it's beyond peace. It, it bliss. You, you can't describe. It's just. So even once you. Uh say get the conviction uh you can still uh, sort of get wrapped up in the illusion again i suppose i would presume but well like, there might says be, there yeah, might be that's... residual awakeness that it still sees it's not really wrapped up well maharaj says in the beginning you have to be alert yeah. you know once once you you remain with this sense of presence and your selfless self just i just i and as Nizagadatta Maharaj says, when you first wake up in the morning, before the world comes and all this, you just die, just die. You just sit there, the sense of I am, the sense of existence without anything mixed in, without a mixing in experiences or anything like this. You remain with yourself with self. Now, falling back into the illusory ditch, Sri Ramaka Maharaj says, that's why Balseb Maharaj has prescribed bhajan and meditation. Meditation. See, if you if you go to the gym and you start to exercise your right arm and not your left arm, and eventually you start lifting more weights with your right arm and more and more and more, and your right arm gets really, really, really big. Your left arm <laughs> is not big at all. It's just sitting there because you've exercised that. Well, the same with this presence, this constant. You're, you're training this mind, this mind of of flowing with yourself, through yourself, only yourself. And you're just exercising this. And then as you turn up the heat within your experiences, this is the most beautiful thing. Something that seems so like, ah, oh, but you remain with your selfless self. You invite the attention of the invisible listener, the meditator meditating, the concentrator concentrating. And you allow these things to pass, as they will anyway, without your involvement. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and this feeling just continues. And then, as we spoke about, I, the experience in the ashram of suddenly this expansion, but then the instant understanding it's not expansion, it's the dissolving of the pressure of the body. You're not expanding. You will feel like you're expanding because you're still from the position of a body form having the experience of expanding. But as you remain with your selfless self, it will be the dissolving of the body pressure. And it, you can't put into words because words came along with the body and you're not a body. I had this idea in my uh, contemplations uh, this week that, uh, uh, that, okay, I wrote it down here. So does the one invisible master ability or basically presence, does presence form the eyeball, the eyeball or does the eyeball form the ability to, the ability to see like a, uh, so, you know, does, is it uh, the ability to see, I was trying to narrow down, does the ability to see come from, from the eye or, or from the presence? And it, well, the answer this is was simple. Presence. Huh? Cut, take, take a spoon and dig out your eye and toss it on the table. 
It's not seeing anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice, actually. You're it's just the there. presence within the body that's the seeing. Presence is still there. <laughs> it's not this this eye, this physical eye. You think, oh, can't see anything now. And in a dream state, you're seeing something, but you're not seeing with your eyes. Exactly. Although you're using, well, and seeing the dream state is very nice because you're using this body and seeing through this body's eyes, and yet you're also seeing the whole outside as well as one, because that's the reality. And no separation. The dream character is looking around at other dream characters, but is also your, like Maharaj says, your video shooting the whole scene, the whole dream. So it's, it's, it's consciousness doing what it does and creating. And it creates because of the t idea or the touch of existence, I exist. I exist and spontaneously an entire world is created. It's like, why live in virtual reality since you're already living in it? Yeah, that would be the dream within the dream within the dream. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <I know. laughs> oh, we're crazy. <laughs> you know, Ron well, Hayden once said that the entire universe is, is your thought. Yes. What? Which what? You what? Say it again. Is, the entire universe is your thought. Uh, oh. In other words, um. The universe is your thought. Yeah. Uh, your projection, I, you know, I would say. Projection, that, uh, right, right. Yeah. You're, cre you're creating it. But there's also seven billion different, uh, because everybody has their, uh, their own. Well, again, that's only in the individuality. Then there is no individuality. Not really seven it's billion a, people. Yeah, it's like a telescope, yeah. basically. A lot of telescopes into the consciousness or the telescopes into the dream state. Because the bodies are empty, it's the one presence perceiving. So the the presence is not limited to the body form. And the body, and I think Nisargadatta Maharaj talks about the telescope. It's just a telescope that peeks inside of this waking state dream. But most simply, Remain with yourself with self. You are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. So once you sense this sense of presence and you are there, oh, so that I, I am that. That means I'm not body. And the body is where the world and the mind and all these sort of things go. All the activities are occurring within the world. All the sense of doership is because I see this body doing things and say it's my doing. But you're formless. The body and all the activities are going on with inside the formlessness that you are. I know, I know Das Bode, um, he said that the, 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 the entire creation is simply imagination. And I, I know that Sidra Meshwa uses that, that expression too. Uh, everything is conceptual, everything is is conceptual assault imagination, um, which lends itself to the fact that this this is like this living dream is you know like um, nothing more than imagination. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see it. I can see it. The dream at night, you know, like when you're sleeping, it, that's very much. Of course, it's all conceptual, <laughs> but this seems much more real, and so. When the masters say that it's nothing more than imagination, it's all conceptual, everything you see and perceive. When you see it for what it is, I guess you're not uh, wrapped up in it anymore. Well, remove the body, and then you understand that the whole thing's a dream. Right, yeah. And the reason, like we say, okay, night after night, we have dreams, and you can say, oh, I know the dream doesn't, isn't real. But you've never left the body to say, oh, <laughs> this isn't real. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But yet, while you're using the body, you can be in touch with yourself and then instantly the conviction will be, 
this isn't real. This can't be real. How? And when this body falls, what? There's. Where would where do you go? The space, like uh, Maharaj uses the example, when the ashram, yeah. the walls in the ashram fall, yeah. and the walls in the yeah, honey. You can kiss it. toilet fall, does the space yeah. in the ashram go to heaven and the space in the toilet go to hell? The yeah. only division or the only seeming division are these bodies. Yeah. And you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. All the memories are from the wrong perspective of being a body, and you're not a body. Nisargadatta Maharaj says that birth is the appearance of I am. Also, that creates time and all these sort of things. And when the I am is no more, then we call it death. But that to which the I am has appeared and disappeared is the constant that you are. But you can teach yourself this because you are that. You, that's why, see, this is the most beautiful thing. If this was just some kind of a, a really great like course and we were all paying a lot of money to, to get enlightened and we had this course and we had to follow these things and all this <laughs> and nobody was getting it and it's like oh come on keep going keep on no but this is this is a, a proven thing you are that so every single one of us is that one and when you remain with yourself the self and you invite the attention of the invisible listener this experience will be the same of knowing yourself because yourself is all there is Knowing yourself is just discarding the illusion and remaining with your own self. You know what? It's time. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank good. you, John. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good one. Yes, yes. Katie wants to say hello. Uh, yes. Hi, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave. Good night.